Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I have developments on my Enceladus lander which will be drilling for water on the surface of Saturn's moon Enceladus and then converting it to hydrogen and oxygen. I've decided to refine the system a little bit by integrating the ion unit which used to be a separate stage up there on those docking ports and put it into the lander. Now, the purpose of the Enceladus in situ resource utilization lander is to refuel one of these tanks, the tank for NASA NTP architecture, which means about 400,000 liters. So that's our goal. Previously, the ion system used xenon, but I decided to change that to oxygen, even though oxygen will be less efficient, less ISP, and also less thrust, because we can replenish the oxygen at Enceladus. Enceladus has the water, we split it into hydrogen and oxygen, and so we can use the oxygen for the ion engines while using the hydrogen for the nuclear engine, which is at the center of this lander. So then we use everything. Uh, well, actually, we need a lot more hydrogen than we need the oxygen, uh, unfortunately. So we dump the oxygen mostly anyway. Uh, but we can refuel the oxygen, so I decided to integrate the ion units into the lander, but they're pretty heavy. They're 2.27 tons for one of those blocks, and we have two of those blocks now instead of one. Uh, so that's a big increase to the dry mass of this lander, which was about 27 tons. So like each one of those is close to 10%. Uh, I added girder segments to the bottom because having the stuff at the bottom now means I have to extend the landing legs further down and the little struts that support the landing legs uh, were hanging loose so that's why I have those girder segments there. And then we have to see whether this whole business actually manages to drill for enough hydrogen, right? So here I've cheated it into space around Enceladus and we're landing it. And we are going to see whether we can drill for enough hydrogen to replenish it in a good amount of time. I want this to be full within six months. That's quite a long time, but, you know, we can be somewhat leisurely about it. So there it is, sinking in. Or at least the drill was sinking in, and then I started up. And we're not really getting the replenishment I'd like. There's the reactor and the generator there. There, KSP Interstellar reactor and generator, as I had before. And then there's the ISRU unit, and it's converting the hydrates into hydrogen and oxygen. Leaving it for a while, it doesn't seem to replenish fast enough. And initially I thought that I would increase the rate at which the ISRU unit did the conversion, while at the same time I actually made it less efficient by uh, increasing the core temp goal, because it turns out that the ambient temperature around Saturn is 134 Kelvin, so there's no way we can get it cooler than that just by radiating stuff out. So I decided to make sure that the core temp goal was 134, which is basically ambient. That's the best we can do. If the radiators can do that, that's perfect. And so I set it to that for more realism, which actually hurts the boil off situation. It means that we're losing more hydrogen because of the higher temperature. But the goal is to drill fast enough to replenish that. And we're not quite doing that. We're, we've got some, but we're definitely not meeting the six month goal that I have to fill this up. I came to realize that it wasn't the ISRU unit that was limiting us, but the drills. We weren't drilling fast enough. And so I added more drills. We now have four drills and I try to run that, but it's still not fast enough. And you can tell whether it's the drilling or the ISRU uh, by whether your hydrates fill up or if you're using ore, your ore fills up. If your ore fills up, then it's the ISRU unit. If your ore or hydrates don't fill up, then it's probably the drills that are slower than the ISRU unit because the ISRU is taking all the hydrates or all the ore and already converting it. So why aren't we drilling for enough? Well, it could be the concentration in our local area, but basically it's uniform stuff around Enceladus. Uh, the hydrates are about 10%, 10.9% of Enceladus it says, which is pretty good, but then the cutoff is 10% at the bottom. I don't know how that all shakes up or whether the ore would be better. The ore distribution is in the same place. It only has 0.9% of the fraction of Enceladus, but then the cutoff is higher. So I don't know how that all shakes up. I continue to drill for hydrates. I look in the drill configuration to see if there's some number that is suspicious, and that thermal efficiency is suspicious. Why at colder temperatures it should be one-tenth of what is at 500 Kelvin seems a bit rough. 
No, I, I, I'm not entirely sure all, how all that works out, but at this point our core temp is obviously much lower and I tried putting on an insane amount of drills and that didn't help so I just decided that we would just set the efficiency to 1 which is what it is at 500 Kelvin though so unless somebody can give me a reason why when they're cold they'll be less efficient uh, I just left it at that and during this is all during a live stream and I asked the chat whether they had any ideas whether uh, it should be one tenth the efficiency at colder temperatures and I didn't get an answer on that so I went with changing it and then with four drills we were able to replenish properly you can see the hydrogen going up it fills the oxygen very quickly and then the hydrogen goes up and in the end we do get filled within six months with less than six months actually four months or so and depending on the patch that we land at it might be better so now I have to test launch it and I decided that we could launch it under fueled on the Orion carrier plane instead of us using the Kasei rocket because it's light enough and then we could launch a separate fuel container to refuel it and then send it on its way so that's the goal here right now uh, but I had a question about whether the mini star would really be balanced with this on top because we're going to have to offset it otherwise it's clipping into the body of the Orion carrier plane which would not be good so I make the whole lander taller preserving the volumes of course and then shift the procedural fairing that I have there up so now it's off center for the mini star right the mini star's engines don't point through it exactly and the mini star's engines basically have differential thrust they're aero spikes but then they that means that they have seven nozzles on one side seven nozzles on the other and could have differential thrust I simulate that by giving them two degrees of gimbal so they've got a two degree gimbal range is what we're working with here and then I have to specially shape the fairing and tuck in the drills to make sure it would clear the body of the Orion carrier plane there with the narrowest of margins and here we go seeing whether the mini star will be balanced not too worried about the Orion carrier plane it's so much heavier than the mini star and the payload there that it you can see the pitch actuation in the corner and it's not using much pitch part of that is because of its high mounted wing which is central in the whole stack and that produces a lot of aerodynamic force that allows it to hold steady and also ultimately as we drain the mass of the Orion carrier plane burning the propellant we'll shut off the bottom engines to maintain the balance but as you can see through the thicker part of the atmosphere the wing is doing most of the work and then it's only when we get to the thin part of the atmosphere that the pitch is starting to be used more heavily and I turn off engines to keep it balanced all right so separating off the Orion carrier plane and lighting two of the mini stars three engines at this point uh, I forgot about the third one uh, we probably should have that the fairings just barely clear the wings of the mini star but they do clear it so that's good and it looks like the mini star is quite balanced even though it only has two degrees of gimbal and of course no reaction wheel that goes about saying in realism overall practically actually uh, my huge O'Neill cylinder does have a reaction wheel I thought that would be prudent but stations sometimes do so that's fine so it carries it to orbit and here we can see it's using about half of the pitch authority but that part works the mini star can carry this to orbit this is about 45 tons by the way because it's under fueled and in a second launch the Orion carrier plane will launch a 45 ton fuel tank to it to rendezvous with it and fill it up so it can go on its way to Saturn watch for that in the next video where I'll do the full test of the system with that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time